Welcome to the Steps tutorial. In this tutorial we'll discuss how to create a step and how to create your questions so that they follow in a logical order underneath your steps. So uh, why don't we start by opening up the ADJ Author program and you can do that by double clicking on your ADJ icon on your desktop. You'll come to this home page and we'll start with creating a new interview and this will take us to a set of default questions that we can play around with and allow us to uh, kind of examine the steps feature. So after clicking on create a new interview uh, you should see these set of four default questions in your uh, flowchart area and a set of uh, those same four default questions in the list and then to the left you should see a number of different options uh, on the menu. Currently we're under the questions tab and in a moment we'll take a look at the steps tab. So uh, let's take a look at how these questions are organized. You'll notice uh, to the left of each of the names uh, of each question you have a number within parentheses. This number uh, encased in the parentheses indicates what step that particular question belongs to. So you'll notice that these first three questions, one, two, and three, belong to step zero. And then this last question, number four, belongs to step one. Now if we move over on the left to, uh, and click on the uh, steps tab, steps button here, um, we'll be able to take a look more closely at how those uh, steps are defined. So this is our step screen and you'll notice that we have a zero step here called access to justice and then three other steps. We can increase the number of steps uh, and we can decrease the number of steps. We can do that simply by clicking on uh, the up or down arrow next to the question steps option. So if I click up you'll notice uh, that I can quickly add uh, an up to 12 steps and we can simply subtract those by clicking on the down arrow. Now you might want to uh, you might wonder can I change the names and yes you can um, certainly every interview is different and you may want to organize the information in a different fashion according to what types of information you're collecting in your interview and you can change this by simply clicking on the text of any one particular signpost or step and so you'll notice if I just click on this text, do you agree? I could change this to collecting, um, maybe I want to move your information here, and maybe I want to collect uh, income and asset information in the next step. It's also suggested that you uh, kind of personalize these uh, initial steps, step zero, to reflect uh, what form you're collecting information for or the name, uh, as it were, of your interview and you may want to have something like the word welcome perhaps and whatever the name of your interview is place that there in the uh, text of your of your signpost. You'll also notice uh, in the box to the right the little um, visual depiction here of, of the road uh, to justice that the signposts are located alongside that road and then you'll notice that each of the signposts have a particular color and that there's kind of a road stop or, or platform if you will with the same corresponding color. This color is important to take note of because not only does it make things interesting along the road, but this color will also come in handy when locating questions under that fall under a particular step. And we uh, can take a look at what I'm talking about by clicking on the questions tab again. And if you'll notice, this question, um, this last question in our list that falls under step one, if we take a look at it in our flow chart, here it is here, it has a kind of steel blue background which if we click back to the step screen you'll notice that was the color for step one for the step one uh, signpost there. So I'm going to click back into our questions. So this kind of helps you identify uh, in the flow chart here what questions belong to any one particular step. You can also in the flow chart here organize your questions by simply dragging and dropping them. So I will demonstrate that by moving our question that is currently assigned to step one, moving that up here so that I can then start um, a series of questions under step one in a kind of column fashion. Now um, several authors you know design their interviews in different ways. It is kind of nice to organize your questions in a column fashion because this allows you um, to kind of keep a handle on the organization of your uh, interview as well as be able to zoom in on particular sets of questions. For instance, if I, if I uh, had added numerous questions under step one, 
and I'll do that simply by clicking on the plus sign down here at the bottom. If I continue to add several steps and let's say I had included all of the questions of my entire interview in that step you'll notice that everything gets kind of farther and farther away whereas if I move things into kind of a column format it uh, brings things closer. Now we can bring things up closer visually in a couple of other ways as well. We can click on the filter option here on the drop down menu and filter our view by any one particular step. So if I wanted to look at just the questions under step 0, I can click on step 0 on the drop down menu and now I've zoomed in on those particular questions. Um, now if these you know, kind of questions were scattered about in my flowchart, it wouldn't be as easy to use this filter zoom feature. So I'm going to click back on all steps so we can see the entire thing again. Everything is uh, back in sight and if we come down here to the bottom right hand corner of our screen and click on fit, we'll go back to that view that we had a bit earlier. Now one other thing you may have noticed quickly noticed as I added several questions. The the names here uh, don't tell us much about what these questions are about. And if we don't change the names of those questions, it can be quite confusing to um, go back and edit questions because you'll not know what's included in any of them if they're all named the same. We can change the names of these questions very easily by opening the question up and modifying not only the step that they fall under, but the actual name of the question. So if I double click on the second question here under step one, I can go to the step option, which is the first option in our question design window, click on the drop down menu and ensure that it falls under the correct step. In this particular case, I want to leave it under step one, so I'm going to leave that there. But I do want to change the name because this is going to be the second question in my series of questions under step one and maybe this question is going to ask something with respect to children. Maybe this is a, a divorce, a no children divorce. And so I need to ask the question about children in order to see if they qualify for this particular interview. And so this tells me something about what is going to be included in the, in the text of the question. Now if I close this, you'll notice that it has moved it down to the bottom and that's because these, the questions order themselves according to how you name them. So it's very important again to uh, name your questions in kind of a logical fashion so that they are, are ordered in a logical fashion, fashion excuse me, uh, in your question list on the left. So what I'm going to do now is kind of delete a few of these extraneous questions that I added and I'm going to do that by highlighting them and clicking the minus tab and we'll delete a few of these and then uh, I'll demonstrate how we kind of change the step that a particular question is assigned to and how that kind of reorders the questions. So let's say this um, question here and here I want to place under step two instead of step one. So let's double click on this question here which is the second, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, fifth question down in the list and I want this to collect, be under the uh, section or step that collects their information, name, address, and so forth. So I'm going to change it to step two, and this will be my first question, so I'll leave the number one there. But I'm going to rename my question name of applicant. And we close this, and now you'll notice that uh, it has been renumbered uh, under step two. We know this because there's a two in parentheses in front of the name of the question. And we know it's the first question in that step because I've named it such, one dash name of applicant. And I'll go back up here to the other question that we're going to address, which is now at this point the fifth question down on the list again. And we'll change this to step two as well, but we're going to change this to be the second question under the step. And uh, you can kind of use your own type of format. I mean, I, I could use A, B, C, and so forth. I tend to like to use numbers and then maybe for further organization uh, you might find it necessary to do a 2A, 2B, and so forth. And this will collect address. And so now you'll notice that my questions are now organized. So what I'm going to do to kind of keep my organization going in my flowchart is drag and drop the two questions that fall under step two to a new column. Now one last thing to keep in mind as you're organizing your questions is that dragging and dropping them in the flowchart does not change 
the order in which they will appear to the end user in the interview. Neither will changing the, the name of the question, as I did here, uh, step two, question one, name of applicant, step two, question two, address. Just by changing the name, that is not what is going to change how the question appears to the end user. In order to ensure that it's flowing correctly, you have to change how the questions are connected, and that's the subject of a, another tutorial with respect to how to connect questions through the use of uh, button clicks. So if for more information, check out a2jauthor.org for this uh, information regarding steps and also other tutorials that uh, help in the design of questions. Thank you.